everybody, welcome back to another video by Dissociated. This is going to be another mental health advice video and this is going to be for anybody who suffers with pretty much any mental health issue that makes you feel like you're unconnected to the world. So this could be schizophrenia, this could be psychosis, it could be depression, anxiety, it could be dissociative disorders, it could be mood disorders, it can be personality disorders, anything that makes you feel like you're not quite connected to the world around you or you're too caught up in your own thoughts or maybe you're having a panic attack and you can't focus and it's like, whoa, this will help you. So if you don't know what grounding techniques are, grounding techniques are things that can help you regain your focus, can help you calm down, can help you feel more grounded in the world around you. It can help bring you back to yourself. So for example, if you do suffer from dissociation, it can help you feel kind of like you're coming back into your body and that you're part of the world around you. So especially if you suffer from DPDR, which is depersonalization or derealization, this could be very, very helpful. As well as if you are very, very depressed and everything's kind of floaty and you feel very, very sad and like everything's and there's no reason to be here anymore. This can help remind you who you are and that the world is real and that it's not just everything inside your head that exists, that there's a whole world out there other than that as well. So if you feel like learning about grounding techniques would be helpful for you, that's what this whole video is about. So please keep on watching and I really, really hope that it helps some of you out there because it certainly helped us. Grounding techniques usually focus on the senses. So you may know that one of the strongest senses, especially in relation to memory, is smell. So if you have a certain scent that brings you back to a certain time period where you were very, very happy, so maybe you equate the smell of fresh grass to a summer in your childhood that was really, really happy. Or maybe your nan wore a certain kind of perfume and that makes you feel joyful and calm and relaxed. That can help. Other things in terms of smells as well. If you don't have any smells that are connected to a certain memory or anything that really triggers a strong response in you, then there are certain smells that can help regardless of that. So you don't have to have any experience with these smells previously, but they can help bring you back to the world around you, whether that's because it's a little bit of a shock <laughs> or because it's very, very calming and relaxing and helps to release endorphins in your brain, helps to calm you down and bring all your stress levels down. Smells like that would be things like lavender. So lavender is a very, very calming smell. The same thing with chamomile, as long as it's relatively strong, obviously not strong enough to make you think, oh my God, or to make you feel sick, but strong enough so that you can smell it. So if you have maybe a little packet of lavender around with you or a little bit of incense, maybe you've got a spray, maybe you have some candles or something like that. You can light a candle, or maybe you've got some lavender essence and you put it on a, a napkin and take it around with you. And you know, whenever if you're feeling not quite with it, you can just sort of give it a sniff. <laughs> it sounds really weird, but like, or maybe you can put it under your pillow at night if you have trouble sleeping or you have a habit of falling into a depressive episode when you try to sleep or you get panic attacks or nightmares or anything like that. That can really, really help. And on the opposite side of that scale, if you are feeling very dissociated or very like, uh, like very flat, or you can't seem to regulate your emotions and you need something to bring you back quickly and sharply, then smells that are strong citrusy smells, smells that might have a little bit of a sharp tinge to them are very, very good at helping bring your focus back. So smells like that would be things like citrus smells, so like lime and lemon and things like that. It's almost like the smell blows away the fog in your brain if it's strong enough or if you have a certain affinity to it. It's kind of like someone going and all the, the fog and the mess in your brain is just kind of like, whoa, because the only thing you can think about, because smell is such a strong sense and so connected to your mind and the rest of your body, that's the thing that you can focus on. And then because your brain is starting to rewire so that instead of focusing on what's going on inside your head, it's focusing on what's happening in the external world, it gives you that minute to kind of feel like 
yourself again, if you know what I mean, or you can focus on what's going on around you rather than what's going on in your head. It's kind of like putting a stopper on it, or like imagine you've got all these, these feelings bubbling up in a bottle. It's kind of like putting a little stopper in it and then all of a sudden you're like, oh. <laughs> Oh yeah, you know? So that's really good as well. So calming smells and active smells. So things like lavender and chamomile versus lemon, lime and citrus scents. Other techniques for grounding. What I find personally to be the best for grounding is tactile and touch sensations because especially when you have other senses like your sight or your smell that you're trying to stimulate it still almost kind of all feels in your head but when you're touching things it very much connects you to the world around you so what I like to do best that works for me personally this might not work as well for you but I am going to give other examples but if I'm very very dissociated the first thing I will do is reach out and touch something around me. So like, for example, I've got my windowsill here, so I'd be touching that, I can feel the wood in it, I can run my hands down and there I've got my radiator and that feels very, very different. There's um, little holes in the top, I don't know if you can hear that. It's me running my hands along the holes in the top of my radiator. It feels very, very cool and very, very smooth. Whereas my wall feels chalky and rough. And if you run your hand along walls, you can feel all the the bits of rubble and stone in it. And that, that gives you a lot of sensation because your hands are very, very sensitive. So that, that kind of is a very, very grounding experience because it feels very real all of a sudden, especially if you've been touching things before, such as maybe you're in bed and you're touching your bed sheets and there's not really much sensation when you touch bed sheets because it's just kind of cottony and soft or maybe a bit rough. And then if you suddenly put your hand on something that's very cold and very, very rough, it's like, whoa, hold on. Is this the real world? Am I real? Sort of thing. So things like that can help. If you carry around things that are enjoyable to touch, so maybe you have some of those little squishy toys I know some people like to like, slime and things like that. I know some people enjoy to help ground them and sort of stimulate their tactile stent senses. <laughs> Try and sim sti what? What? Oh my god, maybe I need to ground right now. No, to try and stimulate their more tactile senses of touch. There we go. Say that 10 times faster, dare you? So things like that can help. So things that are very, very cold, like maybe if you hold an ice cube in your hands for a little while, not long enough for it to hurt, you don't want to harm yourself, or maybe holding it in your mouth, putting some cold water on your face, things like that, or holding something warm so like putting your hands around a candle or something like that or a hot water bottle that has maybe a bit of a rough or a fluffy texture on it can be sort of a two-in-one which is very very helpful so I definitely recommend playing around with touch maybe holding something with you that means something to you if you're feeling very very dissociated so that could be like an old toy or a scrap of fabric that has an interesting texture on it or an interesting pattern when it comes to other things like sight you can maybe have a look around and list everything you can see that's a living thing. So for example, if I look out my window, I can see a hedge, I can see a bush with white flowers on it, I can see a tree which has orange flowers on it, and I can see a bush full of red berries. So things like that can help you, force you to reconnect with the world around you a little bit. Other things I like to do if you are struggling to feel like yourself in the world or feel like you're real or you're struggling to figure out who you are amid all these emotions and all these panics and maybe you have a mood disorder and you don't know who you are and everything's just messy and it hurts and it's, it's hard. Things that I like to do, especially if you have dissociative identity disorder, this can be really, really helpful, especially if you're not sure who you are, which can happen if you're kind of between alters or maybe you're co-conscious and you're very, very dissociated. You're kind of like, who am I? <laughs> so grounding like that would be things like, when's my birthday? Do I have a birthday? What's my favorite food? Who's my best friend? Do I have a best friend? What do I like to do? What's my favorite smell? How old am I? Do I have an age? What clothes am I wearing right now? Am I wearing any makeup? Do I like to wear makeup? What gender am I? Things like that. And obviously if you're asking yourselves things and 
all the questions are, I don't know, I don't know, then stop because that's going to make you panic and focus on other things instead. So what's the weather like? Where am I right now? Do you know where you are right now? <laughs> call for help if you don't. Do you know who to call for help? Things like that. So yeah, what's the weather like? Is it cold? What season is it? What can I see surrounding me? What kind of room am I in right now? What colour are the walls? Yeah? How many pieces of furniture are in this room? Is there somewhere you'd prefer to sit than where you're sitting now? Can you feel where you're holding stress and tension in your body? Have you got your shoulders clenched up really, really tight? Do you feel like you're holding stress in your back? Relax, just breathe out and push your shoulders down a little bit, stretch your arms out, click your back if you need to and just relax for a minute, breathe deeply. Are you clenching your jaw? Are you you're holding your jaw really, really tightly and holding your teeth together? Let it go, unclench your jaw. Have you got a headache? Your eyebrows pushed together, are you furrowing your forehead? Relax it, calm down. Do you have your hands clenched or are you grabbing onto something really tightly? Let go a little bit, smooth your hand over it and feel the sensation of what that feels like. Do you have anything in your mouth right now? Can you taste anything in your mouth right now? What does it feel like? Do you like the way that that feels in your mouth? If you don't, get rid of it. <laughs> things like that. Just learning how to reconnect with yourself, how you're feeling, check up on yourself. Are you holding stress in your body? Are you anxious? Is that making you feel angry and frustrated? Is there anything you can do about that? If you can't regulate how you're feeling emotionally, generally the best place to start is physically because everybody knows the physical and the mental are connected. So especially if you have a mental health disorder and you feel like you don't understand what's going on and everything is too hard and you don't want to think about it anymore because it's just rubbish, then start on the physical. That doesn't mean you have to get up and go and do five push-ups. It can just be something as simple as unclenching your jaw and taking some deep breaths, doing some breathing exercises, doing some grounding exercises. And it may seem like this is a chore and this is, you know, like another thing you've got to do to get better, but it's really not. It's very, very easy, simple things that can be done in a matter of seconds or a matter of minutes. And I promise if it feels right for you, then it will make a world of difference. This is a coping tool for if you're struggling. I hope that some of those things may have been helpful for you. If you want a more in-depth video on things like how to identify where you're holding stress and how to relax your body. I've got a video in the works on things like how to recover from a panic attack or a dissociative episode and things like that. Would that be interesting for you guys? How do you feel about things that aren't necessarily 100% DID related? Things like this would be coming as an extra video alongside DID things and not replacing the dissociative identity disorder theme of our channel because that, that is what this channel is about. It's mental health advocacy and mental health awareness and dissociative identity disorder. That's the main part of this channel is the DID. And then if you suffer from any other mental health disorders, if I can help, I want to. And if you're enjoying this kind of series, then I will push it forward for you and you can have two videos a week. So... Let me know how you feel about that. Does that interest you? Did you find this helpful? Do give me a little comment below. Let us know how you feel about it. If you have any requests, let us know. And yeah, I guess we'll see you all in the next video. Make sure you check us out on social media so you know if we're going live or when our next uploads are and things like that. So don't forget to follow us. All our social media is at Dissociated. Due to a lot of requests for things like a Patreon and a co coffee account, which you can find as always at forward slash Dissociated. So please do have a look at that. Also, we have a sponsor, BetterHelp. And if you sign up at BetterHelp, using forward slash Chloe. It helps to support our channel. So if you are interested in looking at therapy online without leaving your house, because for some reason, no matter what that reason is, you can't get a therapist, whether you can't afford it or you can't leave the house due to agoraphobia or social anxiety or something like that. We did a whole video on therapy and starting out for therapy. So you can check that out. And if you use our better help link, if you feel like that would be useful for you, then it does help support the channel. So please do have a look at those things if you would like to support us. And I hope you all have a really lovely day. We'll see you all in the next video, guys. Lots of love, everybody. Bye-bye.